A couple of weeks ago, I did a short little video talking about Microsoft's recall, their AI that records everything you do that you can later on search through. And I mentioned in that video how doing something basic like that shouldn't be that difficult. And a lot of people in the comments said to do it. So I did. Now, I want to say here up front that I know that what I've done is nowhere near advanced or as complex as is what they did. But the whole point was that I could write a very, very simple script and get the basic concept down. And I'm actually not using any AI here. I'm not a huge, I'm not hugely interested in hugely interested. I'm not interested in AI very much. I find it useful in certain situations, very scary in other situations. It's here, it's not going anywhere. Uh, but let's go ahead. I'm gonna show you uh, how it works. Uh, it's very simple to get set up and uh, I'll demonstrate it. And then I'll go over you know the code line by line so we can look at it and oh definitely definitely could use lots of improvements uh but again this is just a you know basic concept here of being able to record everything you do and then search through it simply so let's jump right in okay here i am at my gitlab page where i have my project and it really is just a shell script uh, with, to start up the recording, uh, and then a shell script that starts up a server, uh, and then the interface to search through your history is just basic HTML with some JavaScript, which could greatly be improved. I mean, that's one part that could be really improved on this. Uh, but let's go ahead and just get it installed. So we're going to go to Git. You just copy this install instruction, paste that into your shell. It's going to clone it to your home directory under a folder called recall. And then to start recording, we do this here. It just moves into that recall. Uh, folder and starts a recall script, which we will look at later on in this video. So I'll go ahead and do that and it will start recording. It's going to take a picture every couple of seconds. So at this point I can start doing stuff on the web. So I'll just do a bunch of stuff. You know, I'll search cat videos and look up some software stuff and um, I'll speed through this piece of the video and we'll come back to it. I uh, ran it for a while, I looked at a bunch of websites, I then just killed the script by coming back here and hitting control C. Let's go back to the GitLab page. Again, there'll be a link in the description to this. And now uh, we can now search our history. We can keep the recording going while we're searching our history. I just decided to kill it. So I'm gonna just copy this and I'm gonna paste this in here and it's going to start up a web server that only works on a loopback so no one can access it outside of your local computer. It's just running on a loopback device and I will open up in the web browser and here we have the things that it recorded, some nice thumbnails. Uh, I've gone back and forth on the size. These are five, uh, uh, 512 uh, pixels wide. But here I can search, you know, again, cats, and then it will bring up anything that has the word cat in here. So I can go to the cat videos here. I can type in termux if I was like, oh, I was looking at stuff about termux. And then here we can see the stuff that has that word in it. Uh, and I can also, and, and also if I didn't show, you can click on this and it brings up a full scale thing. So again, things could definitely be improved on this search functionality because it is not f smart in any way. It's not fuzzy in any way. It's just using JavaScript that's looking. Uh, each one of these images has all the text that it, uh, is on the screen, dumped into a database, linked to it. So I'm searching for keywords. So if I did, like if we look at this, we have uh, F-Droid and Termux. So if I was to come back here, I have uh, Termux and that image comes up. And if I was to type in uh, Droid, uh, it will come up as well. But if I type in Termux, Droid, it's not gonna come up because it's it's not a search fuzzy find, but that's that's kind of minor to the whole point. The whole point of, is recording the information. I'm able to search through it here. Uh, we have timestamps. I could show the date and time uh, under each one of these images might be useful. That data is stored. Again, it just needs to be added to the interface uh, through the JavaScript when it loads. Uh, what other things I look up? I looked up oh, stuff about ESP uh, A266s. So here's my searches on them. And you can see I started watching some videos about it. And again, I can click up 
and bring it. So again, uh, I can see the screen and I can see the address there. Another feature of this would be that could be added to it would be any URLs. Once I click on the image, it would maybe list the URLs so I can go back to this website. Again, that information is being recorded. My search features can just, that, that was the most complicated part of it is just making this interface. You know, I was just trying to keep it simple. Uh, so if I type in relay, I did watch a video on ESP with relays. So there that is that. So that's the basic concept of how it works. Again, not super fancy. I think the biggest thing is setting up more of a, a smart, fuzzy filter. There are JavaScript libraries out there. Really probably you could write something that just is a little bit smarter in pure JavaScript myself if I cared enough to do that. I'm doing this as a demonstration. I don't want something constantly running in the background recording everything I'm doing, but at least it's all done, do, be, being done locally. And again, uh, I think the other things that could be added to this is showing the date underneath it. Again, a timestamp is saved, so that would be easy enough to do. And then when you click on the image, instead of just showing a full size of the image, uh, but actually listing uh, important clickable stuff like URLs. Let me go ahead and close my web browser here, go back to my shell. I can kill that interface now. Let's look at how this works. Let's list out in here, we have some files. So first off, we'll start off with the recall shell script, which is the script that records everything. And I'll walk you through this. So we set some variables, uh, you know, our directory where everything's gonna be run from and stored, which is, I just said it's my home directory, a folder called recall. Uh, and then we're gonna have a database file. It's gonna be a SQLite 3 database which is common, you know, for local stuff that, you know, if on your phone, your your contacts and, and phone history and stuff like that is all going to be stored in that sort of thing. Uh, then we're going to have a directory where images are saved to. And then the thumbnails, which are the images that are scaled down. Here we have the size. This would be the width of the image. I set it to 512. You can adjust it to wherever you want. This line just checks for the dependencies. We need scrot for capturing images. Uh, image magic, uh, which the Convert command is one of those. Uh, image magic is going to be used. Tesseract is an ORC. It's going to convert everything in the image, all the text in the image, to text. And we're just running it with basic options. You can actually use Tesseract. I've talked about it in the past. You can teach it about different fonts and stuff. I'm just doing the basic options. So you can improve upon that as well. And then we also want to make sure SQLite is installed. If any of these programs is not installed, well, then it's going to try and install any dependencies that are required there. Next, we're going to check is does our image directory exist? Does our thumbnail directory exist? If not, create those directories uh, recursively. Next, we're going to create our database. It's going to do this. It's going to try to do this every time you run the script. Uh, I tried, uh, I originally had check to see if the database exists. If it does exist, just continue. If not, then create the table. But for some reason it wasn't working. So I just have it create the, the database and table every time. So if it already exists, it will give you an error. I just dumped that to dev null. Again, this is very hacky and put together. Then we just start our while loop where it's going to loop through and take pictures. First thing we're going to do is get a timestamp. And then we're going to create a variable based on that timestamp for the image that we're saving. And then we're going to take a screenshot. What are we going to do next? Well, we're going to check to see if a variable last image exists. If it does, then check to see if that file actually exists. If it does, well, then we're going to compare. Uh, compare is a program that is built into Image Magic. It's part of the Image Magic package. We're going to compare the, la the current image to the last image. And based on the difference there, so we're getting a value here. And I'm saying then, if that value, C, is greater than 0 0.001, and I'm using uh, BC to do the math there because it's a float point. If it's greater than that, that means the image has changed. That way, if you're sitting there looking at the same article or document and you're not doing anything, it's not taking the same photo over and over and over again. It's looking for a change in the picture. And if that change is big enough, and I just arbitrarily chose this number, it seemed like a good one. Again, something else that could be tweaked. If it is, well, then we're going to, well, take a new photo. So we're going to save the photo. If not, uh, so we're going to save the photo. We're going to, well, it's already been saved. It was saved up here. If it has changed since last one, we're going to resize it and save that to the thumbnails directory. And then we're going to run Tesseract on it for the OCR. We're going to remove any um, uh, quotation, a single quotation marks because that was causing issues in my database. Uh, and then we're going to save uh, to the database the timestamp, the full path to the image, which we don't really use, but I figured it's good information to have. And then all the text that it found in that image. Again, I'm not doing anything with AI here or image recognition at all other than looking for text. You could use AI for that. There's other libraries that you could use to look for certain objects in the images. I have Nextcloud uh, server running in the other room that actually tags photos based on stuff. I didn't want to get into all that. Uh, so I'm just doing 
text on the screen looking for that. But you could act, definitely add another program here if you wanted to add some sort of AI that dumps it to a database that looks for objects in the screen. Uh, okay, so that's if the image has changed enough. If the image hasn't changed enough, well then we're just gonna echo out, don't save image, and we're actually gonna remove it because it's already been saved once because we need to save it to compare it. And then we're gonna set the current image to the variable last image and sleep two seconds. I want to say that I heard the actual recall takes a picture every five seconds. Uh, I said set this to every two seconds because we have some processing here. Uh, definitely the ORC uh, is going to take a couple of seconds. So you can adjust the, the, the how much it loops here. So that's, that's what it does. It takes an image, compares to the last image. If it's changed enough, we'll then run o, uh, create a thumbnail, get all the text in the image, and put it in the database. Great. That's simple enough. So what do we have in our server? Uh, SH. Well, all it does is make sure you have BusyBox installed. If you don't have BusyBox installed, install it because that's what I'm using as a web server. We're starting up BusyBox as a web server. We're forcing it into the foreground uh, with variable output. You could remove that if you just want it to run in the background. You remove the FVV. P is port. I just picked a port that wasn't being used on my computer, port 5555. Five, five, five. Might be something there. And then I have some uh, a configuration file here. If we look at that configuration file, what does it do? Well, it's denying all IPs other than the loopback IP, which means basically uh, if you list out your network devices, there's a, a device usually called LO. That's a loopback. It's a virtual device. That just means that you're doing this privately on the local machine. You're running it as a web server, but nothing can access it other than this machine. That way you don't have other people on your network looking at all your history, right? Uh, so yeah, and it's running in the current directory. Uh, which you want to make sure you run this script from this directory. And again, if you look at here, that's what we're doing. We move into that directory, we run that script, and then you just go to that in your web browser. Um, and if we look at here, if I cat out, there's a CGI bin, which is a server-side script. Uh, and there's one script in there, and it's history. And all that does is, well, it dumps all the information from the history. So eventually your database is gonna get pretty full, so we'd wanna add something if you're gonna run this a lot that clears out the history and maybe only returns a certain number, you know, going back a certain amount. I'm just doing this, again, this is very hacky, just thrown together. So I'm just dumping everything in that database because I don't plan on running this all the time. But if you do plan on running something like this in the background all the time, you'd want it to clear out the history every once in a while. Otherwise, that database would get pretty big and your hard drive would get loaded up with all those screenshots. Uh, I have a cleanup script that I actually just added before I started recording this, uh, and it, all it does is it deletes, it asks you if you want to delete, uh, you know, clean things up. If so, it deletes your database, and it deletes your images and thumbnails. So it basically deletes everything it records, but leaves all the scripts intact. Anything else in here? We have the license. I put this under a GPL license. Oh, and then the HTML, which has HTML, CSS, and JavaScript all in one. You can look through this. It's just, it just basically calls that one server-side script, gets all the information from the database in a JSON format, and then it loads it up as um, href that loads up uh, the image when you click on it. It loads the image into the image box, and then in a hidden div tag, it loads all the text for each image. And then the search actually just looks for what you type, and it looks for, again, exact match. A big improvement on this would be doing some sort of fuzzy find, uh, but it looks for uh, a div tag with whatever text you type, and then it makes the parent of that, uh, which is a span, uh, either visible or invisible, uh, depending on whether it finds a match or not. And that that's it. Uh, super simple, very hacky, uh, and the point of this wasn't to make something that's production ready that everybody's gonna use, but the basic concept, uh, as I was saying, of taking screenshots, getting information from it, and then being able to search that could be done very simply, again, the, the main script here is what? It's, well, let's open it up and it's 57 lines, but 17 of that is, is you know, the copyright information, a couple lines of comments. So it's, it's, it's a very short script, as you can see, to record everything. And then, again, I just made an HTML interface because I thought that was the cleanest way to make an interface uh, that is easy to modify. That's it. Uh, again, you guys asked for this. Uh, I hope I didn't disappoint you. I'm sure there's a lot of people who are going to criticize this because, oh, you're comparing that to what Microsoft did with AI. No, well, I'm just saying the basic idea of recording everything you do and being able to search that history is not that. To, to, get, to get a little bit further, 
to, to get to something that's a lot more usable would only take a little bit more work, but you know what? Again, I don't want something running in my background, whether it's being sent to a server or being stored locally. I just I just don't need that. I have my shell history. I have my web history. I don't really need much more than that. Uh, but I hope that if someone else wants to, you know, is interested in something like this, well, I hope this points you in the right direction. Maybe you could use some of the script or maybe at least gives you the ideas on how something like this could be done. Um, yeah, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. I'm Chris with a K. There's a link in the description to my website and also a link uh, to this project. And again, just follow the instructions of cloning it, running it to record, and then running your server. And hopefully, uh, if you're on a Debian-based system, it will the scripts will try to install all the dependencies you need to get this running. Thanks for watching. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.